Um, Jason said, what do you do when you can't find the excitement? Example, I love high altitude mountaineering, but it's been taken away. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So for me, I can always go on adventures in my mind. I have a really strong um, imagination. I always have had, even as a little kid. Um, so I can cre I create a picture in my mind of what it is that I want and what would be exciting, and I start planning for it. So it doesn't have to be a physical thing. Um, for me, as I said, I can live in my head for like weeks at a time and have a wow of a time because I can create such vivid, strong images in my head. And that's why I think one of the reasons that I'm able to achieve the things that I'm able to achieve because I can see them very clearly in my head first and then the how just falls into place. So I don't try to make, you know, this has come from years of practice, but I don't try to dot every I and cross every T and all of the rest of it. And though recently I've been struggling with like the bigger vision, like the vision beyond the vision beyond the vision, and I, I start to zero in on a visualisation and then I realise, really, that's it? Like, isn't there something bigger than that? There's something bigger than that. And so I've been kind of uninspired because one of the things that I've been doing is trying to make all the pieces fit. So, for example, like where I want to live and, hey, Mel, um, lots of different things, trying to make them all fit under this one big vision. Like um, I'm trying to create a master pet puzzle and every piece has to fit and it's got to fit in a specific piece, like whole, right? And, and if that doesn't fit in that hole, the whole thing is fucked sort of thing. And so when I'm visualising, because I'm such a ducks in a row organised person, if I can't make the pieces fit, it's like I just give up because it's like, well, I can't see how I'm going to get this part to work with this part and then where this part here is going to fit in, so none of this is going to work. And then I'm frustrated with myself. And so I've realised, and I'm sharing this because maybe some of you have been caught in this too, right? So I've made a decision that instead of trying to create the one big vision, what I'm going to be asking myself more regularly is, what do I want my life to look like? So on the day-to-day, -day, what does that look like? Which is pretty much the life I live now, right? And then what are the things that I want to be looking forward to? And then what are some things that would bring excitement into my day, into my year, into my life as a, as a whole? And start to basically create it moment by, not moment by moment, but piece by piece without any consideration to how they all fit together. Because me trying to get them to fit together um, is causing problems. <laughs> and so it's like, well, what if they don't fit? They actually don't need to fit. So, <laughs> yay, yay, I'm glad I'm getting so many yeses. So, yeah, trying to not fucking figure out every detail of everything because it actually doesn't matter. I've just got to work out what, what that is. And so for me, it's like the big picture usually has to be like, it's like this is the overarching theme slash goal that has to be achieved and these are all the working parts and so now it's like okay what do I want it to be like what is and the overarching theme for me is just to live a fucking rich juicy fulfilling life that feels good and it doesn't matter where the house is it doesn't matter where I travel to or who I travel with or where on the calendar I get to make that work it's like that isn't those are the details and so I'm working really hard on making myself bigger than any problem that I have going on or any challenge that, that shows up. And the way that I do that is by expanding on each of those things. So for me, you know, I'm trying to think of examples. Like in my business, right, part of me feels like, I, you know, I want to go bigger. And then part of me is like, well, is it you just like because we're supposed to go bigger? And then part of me is like, yeah, so I have this this thing that won't go away, but it doesn't feel like a pressing urge, which is, you know, launch my coaching academy so that you guys actually have a decent coaching training academy that is like there's this much of the coaching stuff that's drawing out the best of you and the rest is about the business stuff because that's where most coaches fall down, right? And then part of me is like, well, that feels big. And, but I know within two weeks of like knowing that the ball's rolling on that, it won't feel big anymore. And so it's like, okay, so if it's not that and that's just part of the master plan, then what is the bigger thing? And so I, can't, I haven't been able to get to that. So I'm still chipping my way away through that and trying to work out in each of those particular areas 
what is the goal beyond the goal beyond the goal beyond the goal, right? Because when we do that and we're like, whoa, that's the one and it feels really big and juicy and scary and all those things that we want it to be, right? When I get to that, then anything that's going on now feels so tiny by comparison and you just know it's kind of irrelevant and it's just going to sort itself out. We need to go beyond the thing, beyond the thing, beyond the thing. So I hope that makes sense. And so when I'm feeling uninspired and when my energy is like, I will be uninspired and flat and bored if I'm not chasing something big. And right now I've kind of chased so many big things and they keep coming to fruition probably faster than I imagine, easier than I imagine. And then it's kind of like, well, I'm bored with that. I'm, I'm bored with like setting these big goals and achieving them, which is stupid and it's not. And sometimes I think it's just because I'm in a shitty mood that I get irritated by that. And other times, you know, I'm really grateful for it. And then there are times when I feel like it's got to be bigger. And then there are times where I feel like it needs to be smaller. Do you know what I mean? So if you, this is an insight to my brain right now, but if this is going on for you, it's like, this is just part of it, right? This is us just figuring it out and hand on your heart, taking a moment and really breathing into it and asking yourself, what do you really want? What do you really want? And then being prepared for that to change. You know, sometimes the things that I feel like I really, really want next week aren't the same. But if I think about ultimately what I want, and it's, it is, it's, it's living that big juicy life and feeling fulfilled and turned on by my life and waking up excited about the thing that I want to do next, um, that's the thing that needs to remain. Like it doesn't matter what, what it is or how that's going to happen. It's just knowing that, it, you know, there's something to wake up to and be excited about every day something that you, I'm going to have to work at because it's not just going to fall in my lap. The pursuit of it also has to be really enjoyable, really, really enjoyable. Um, yeah, okay, so when it comes to like general energy about how we show up as a coach, how we show up as a you know, business person, an entrepreneur online, all of those things, how I manage my energy is just focusing on what I really want and knowing what, what it is that I want within like a certain time frame and being excited about that thing. Like that's how I've lived my whole life. My whole life has been about that. It's been about what's the next thing that's going to excite me? What's the next thing that is going to consume me? Because when we have that energy around um, feeling consumed by something, for me that's excitement. I'm just drawn to the comments chasing the big six-figure thing that I don't actually want to live that life right now. I was chasing what others have. I want it small. Okay, so Georgia, a couple of questions, right? The thing is chasing the big six-figure thing. Um, I had a conversation with a friend yesterday because um, I've been trying to put together like a peer-to-peer -peer mastermind and we had this real we had this realization that there are so many people online that are wannabes and tryhards and you know they they make out they're really successful and all the rest of it and they're really not and so my friend and I we've been trying to find a group of people that are like on the same path that we are where we're at above where we're at and all the rest of it and no one's putting their hand up because people just most of the people just aren't there so the first thing that I want to say, oh, and this is a comment that I had. I said, it, it blows my mind because my friend said, you know, a lot of people aren't at six figures yet. And I'm like, and that just blows my goddamn mind because it is so easy to get to six figures. Like you've got to be doing a lot wrong, like deliberately wrong not to be at six figures as a coach, right? That's what I honestly truly believe. And so the first thing that I want to say to you is, Stop making the six finger thing a big deal because it's really not a big deal. It isn't. And the more you make it a big deal, the more you put six figures on a pedestal, um, the more like big it feels and, and unattainable it feels when it's really, really not. And so the first thing that I'm going to say to you is why wouldn't you want six figures? Like in my mind, I don't know how anybody lives on less and has choice and options and wants to go and do the things. You can still choose to live a smaller life, smaller house, smaller car, all those things, but why wouldn't you choose to have six figures coming in as a minimum anyway? Because you can have it, but maybe um, we, we stop chasing things that we really deep down don't think we can have.